Are you guys like having some super nerd out? I mean, this is the end of day two. Have you guys had some crazy nerd out experiences already? Like get that awesome autograph, get that collectible, meet someone, take a photo. Who's had that? Show of hands. See, I love that. Majority of the room, hands are raised, and it's only Friday. We have two more days of this craziness ahead of us. So, and, uh, and this hour promises to be equally crazy and fun. Uh, without further ado, let me just say, I've done this a few times with this gentleman, and uh, he's excellent, he's a, a true entertainer in every sense of the word, and is just a heck of a lot of fun. And I want you guys to really welcome him to stage and make a ton of noise. Of course, you know him. I mean, if you're a fan of SpongeBob SquarePants, you know him. There you go, there's one right there. If you know, uh, watch the show, the animated shows, Batman, Spider-Man, you know him. You've seen him in the heat, in Freaks and Geeks. And of course, video game nerds like myself will remember him from Wing Commander and the most iconic Bully that has been committed to screen makes a noise from Back to the Future, Mr. Tom Wilson!
You might think you don't like me. You think I'm on an ego trip. Well, I don't care because I'm famous. And that's more important than relationships. Famous more important than relationships. Tom Wilson, he's kind of famous. He has lost all of his friends. Big whoop. Tonight is going to be the best. A show this party a big success. Just lower your standards. Start expecting less. Let those lowered expectations seventh of them up here. Start with me. me. Good evening, hello everybody. Thanks for being here. What fun we're having, am I right? Yeah. What fun, what fun. And for those of you just taping me on your phone and not actually being here in person, <laughs> just later on when you look at this, hello to you too. <laughs> I don't actually exist. I'm only enjoying experiences two weeks from now when I watch this. <laughs> My screen and I have a relationship. <laughs> no one speak to me. <laughs> Good to see everyone. Uh, I, I was, uh, you know, I'm an actor. I've been in a lot of things, a lot of things, and I continue to work. You know why? Because old dudes get jobs in commercials. <laughs> and that's my idea. You keep working by doing old guy in commercials. <laughs> I'm going to be the old guy who hurts his back. <laughs> Is he on every commercial you see? Yeah. Yes. There's a big, big demand in Hollywood for old guy who hurts his back. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, there's a lot of work. And the scooter came at no cost to me. <laughs>
But I'm way more famous and important to American culture than you even think. You know why? 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 I'm, <laughs> why? I'll tell you. <laughs> I was the actor who introduced biscuits at Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yes. National yeah. commercial. Yeah, before me, there were no biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine life like that? No. no. Oh, you young people. I had biscuits whenever I want. They didn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't exist until I introduced them. I'll act it out for you. Yeah. No, free. This comes with the purchase price. <laughs> All with Danielle's footage. Yeah. I was a young construction worker on the job. Who <laughs> <And> left, sir? <laughs> yes, I had a lunch of a chicken breast and a cool, refreshing drink. <laughs> but something was missing. <laughs> Fresh bottom of biscuits made from scratch. Boink. I had a biscuit in my hand. A biscuit magically appeared in my hand, and I introduced this country, this nation, nay, the world. <laughs> to biscuits with your fast food meal. You're welcome. <laughs> Done that kind of stuff, you know. I've been the biscuit guy in Kentucky Fried Chicken. I got a job, it was the 1984 Olympics in Los Angeles, and I got a job because I kind of looked like this guy, Pete Merringer, who won the gold medal in the 1932 Olympics. So they made this grainy, scratchy, fake black and white footage like it was 1932 when I was wrestling people and everything. And they say, Do you know how to wrestle? And when you're a young actor, what do you say, sir? Yes. yes. Of course I do. <laughs> wrestle? I'll wrestle a bear. I don't care. Uh, Will it be on TV? All right. Yeah. <laughs> so I did that kind of thing. I was on the Facts of Life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo! Uh -huh. That's right. Big time. <laughs> yeah. Blair and Joe wanted to take the college money and spend it on scholarships for underprivileged kids. What? I was Moose, what? captain of the football team. I wanted to use it for a new scoreboard. <laughs> Do you understand the intensity of that struggle on the facts of life? <laughs> you take the good, you take the bad, you take yeah. the both, but then you have the facts of life. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. I did a bunch of that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? I was on Night Rider. Here's my role for Night Rider. Wait! Well, the car's fast. <laughs> so, so, um, so this movie was coming out, well, being filmed, you know, Back to the Future. <clears throat> What? Oh. Not a, what How to do? How to do? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's been translated into space language. <laughs> you know, the people of Saturn said we would like to translate it into our language. <laughs> it did okay. <laughs> Uh, so they're doing this movie, Back to the Future. Um, they, they, uh, my agents at the time tried to get me into an audition for this movie. And it was very difficult because it was a big Steven Spielberg produced, Robert Zemeckis directed, all this, it's a movie. And, and now it's the same thing, but at that time it was really much, wow, a movie is certainly a different thing than introducing biscuits and Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> running after the hit car. <laughs> So my agents do a good job talking them into having me come in and audition for Back to the Future. Honestly, I thought this Biff character 
That was a big part of the movie. I mean, this is a big movie. It's a big part of the movie. So I'm not going to get that. So I, actually, I really thought if I do a great job, maybe I could get cast as one of this guy's gang members. Yeah. You know, that's really what my thinking. So I went into this audition, and I go, I meet the lady who's, who's casting it, and she said, makes me real comfortable. She sits down and I said, well, I talked to your agent. You're supposed to be God's gift to acting or something, so. <laughs> <laughs> See what you got here. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so you pull the spot. They were special, uh, they were, they were spe they called them size. They were special audition material because they didn't want to give away the entire script and everything, the secrets of the script, so they had written specific things. But it was me pushing George McFly around and everything. And I did the scene and fly, all that stuff. Um, and I, apparently I did well. She says, hmm. Let me get Mike in here. You know, get went out to get the other cast and director in there. Why don't you do it again? I did it again. And they brought me back again and again and again. And to this day, 2017, I've never done more uh, callbacks, they call it, when you get called back to audition again, when the, the herd is thinning. You know, <laughs> 500 guys, 300 guys, 100 guys, you know that thing? I've never gone back for more auditions to anything than I did for that. I went back several, several times. Um, so they, I went, I don't know, six or seven times, they had me come in early in the morning once to make me up as an older person um, in order to see how I might act as an older person and do different scenes and that kind of stuff. And we were paired up very early on when, when it's a team thing, me and McFly, you know, and they'll say, they'll bring a bunch of George McFly's in, a bunch of big guys in, and they'll say, well, you read with him, and then mix and match, and say how he does it with him, and Bob do it with Ted, and all that. Well, Crispin Glover and I were paired up first. They said, you do it with him. And, and, uh, and we went in, and for the rest of the audition process, we were together. Stop recording video. Tom Crispin, Tom Crispin, Tom Crispin. Tom Crispin, the whole way. So you're thinking, I don't know, what's, what's that about? Anyway, the last audition. The last audition, they say, we, they want to see you with like the heads of the studio, and Steven Spielberg will be there, and Robert Zemeckis, and everybody. And it's a little, this, this, this room at Amblin Entertainment, uh, Steven Spielberg Company. Big, big meeting table. And I go in, and it's Crispin and I. And we do the scene, McFly, with this, you know, hello, anybody home, all that stuff. <laughs> so Bob Zemeckis, the director, takes me aside and says, Tom, we really kind of want to see you physically how you do, like really kind of push him around, you know what I mean? I mean, bring it up a little bit and do, you know, do your thing, like a little bit more strut, a little bit, so, okay. So as a young actor, and even an older actor, sometimes you go for it, you know what I mean? <laughs> well, I've come this far, right? I didn't drive from Philadelphia to Hollywood to just go halfway, you know what I mean? <laughs> I drove out there to do it. So I beat Crispin up since, I mean, I'm, just, I'm, throw, I'm throwing him around the room, I'm pushing him up against the table, we fly all this stuff. Anyway, at one point in the scene, I kind of, I take him by two lapels, and I lift him into the air, and I'm pushing him up, I'm going, fly, you do, and but during this, I've done so much physical stuff, and I have him in the air, that, you know, you second guess yourself at these, and your brain goes like, what on earth? <laughs> <laughs> Are you out of your mind? <laughs> and at that instant, I completely face, forgot face, everything in the scene. <laughs> I forgot the lines, I forgot everything, and he's like in the air, and I'm thinking, I, I, uh, and I put him down on the ground and did the whole uncomfortable just. And then they say, um, well, thanks a lot, Tom. Thanks a lot. We find we out. Stop, stop recording video. Thank Button. you. Uh, Chris, could you stay here? <laughs> <laughs>
I had Bruce Springsteen tickets that night. The, you know, I was already late for the concert. This in Los Angeles, California. Yeah, the whole entire sports arena I lost it. Dancing in the dark. I'm in section Q. <laughs> I almost had a career. <laughs> really, I was so bummed with Dr. Bruce Springsteen. The next morning, my agent calls me and says, You got Biff. You are Biff in back. So, uh, so uh, it, it was it was an amazing experience um, it, it, to to do so many different characters in movie. I kind of I don't know if there has been another movie where someone's played all kinds of different family members <laughs> at different ages and everything. So it comes up a lot. Like how did I approach that? And we'll do Q and A's right after this, Aaron. We'll you know we'll get some of your questions if you have any. But, uh, okay, which was the most fun to do? That comes up a lot. Right? <laughs> just, okay, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> uh, I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I, yes, I, I've ridden subways in my life and trains. I've ridden bikes. I didn't ride a horse. <laughs> my favorite was Back to the Future 3, the third one. First of all, even at the time that we made it, the late, late uh, what, 80s, early 90s, uh, they were just not doing a Western of that size and scope anymore. They didn't make that gigantic John Wayne-like Western with, with, with trucks doing, you know, going along with a camera as all these horses are running. That kind of shit, that's very expensive to make. I mean, they just don't make that kind of thing. So, for the first time in a long time, a big Hollywood movie was making a Western. A big Western. So, I got the opportunity. It was unbelievable. I learned horseback riding from a man named Corky Randall, who worked on all John Wayne's movies, who taught the director John Ford how to ride, who worked on all those movies, and he taught I went out to his ranch in California and learned to ride from some of the legendary, legendary Hollywood cowboys, you know? I learned how to quick draw a gun. They said you have to learn that. So all during Back to the Future 2, in the rehearsals, at lunch and everything, I'm in futuristic outfits, wearing a holster and a holster gun. <laughs> I was practicing all the time, spinning the gun, shooting, doing all that stuff. Because I learned for this man, Arvo Ojala. They said, about this guy, he's Holly, he's taught everybody. He taught Kevin Costner and Silverado, but all the way back through gun smoke and all the westerns, how to shoot the gun. Arvo was the guy in the in the opening credits of the show Gunsmoke. You remember that TV show? Yeah. The girl with mm. Gunsmoke. Arvo is the little guy that walks out into the road and Marshal Matt Dillon shoots him dead. You know, so he was in the show like, oh, like that. You get paid for that. <laughs> he was in Gunsmoke. It ran for like 25 years, and every week he got paid just for going, oh. <laughs> Arvo, at the time that I met him, he was probably 80 years old. Wow. He was the slowest, fastest man I've ever seen. <laughs> the fastest gun in the West was the slowest person you could ever imagine. He's 80, walks like this. What are you doing here, Tom? <laughs> and then you have the gun holster on and everything. Was, now, when you always remember, you gotta hit it with your thumb. Because... <laughs> 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 Arvo could shoot a gun that's a single action revolver, which is that now they have double action where you just pull it out and go bang with the trigger. But then old Western gun is click, click, bang, click, click, bang, like that. So he would shoot three times. He would draw it, hit the, hit the hammer there with his thumb, bang, hit it with this thumb, click, click, bang, hit it with his pinky, click, click, bang. So he could go, wow. and 
put it back in, and he shot it three times. Wow. So, yes, and then he came back to his car. All right, bye. <laughs> But, but to be able to, to be around people like that was absolutely amazing. That's been the thrill to me, is it's, it's re when you're a young man and you get to be there when they're crashing a car or when they're blowing up a truck. That's a lot of fun, you know, when you're a kid. Look at that thing blow up, cool. But the really cool thing are the, are the moments, you know, first Back to the Future, a much older man was doing my special makeup, the prosthetic makeup, to make me look older. And he was quite an old man at the time. And he was, he was doing the glue on my face. And I was just curious, you know, why still be in show business? I said, well, why, you know, why is he still working? He goes, oh, you know, Tom, he did the makeup on the Wizard of Oz. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> You get to work with just people in history, you know? Just historic people, and to do a Western like that and be part of movie history is just amazing. And in the third Back to the Future, Harry Carey Jr., Pat Buttram is in there, Doug Taylor, just historic uh, cowboys from the movie. So that, that meant a lot to me uh, to be a part of that. Did that make sense? Are we happy yeah. with yeah. 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 It was great. It was great fun. But now, I, you know, I, I could talk a blue streak. So I just want to make sure that you guys, because I'll just be blah, blah, blah. And then there was this funny story. Yeah. And then we're out of time. And you guys are like, hey, man, I wanted to ask about the thing. Yeah. I had a question about that biscuit thing. <laughs> so why, why don't we bring Aaron back up? Can we? Can we just bring Aaron back up. So Aaron can you get know, he's a traffic cop because I don't know how to do this. Uh, well, there's mics right there and there, so line up if you guys got a question. But I actually do have a question about the biscuit thing. All right. <laughs> biscuit question. When, when you're a young actor, I mean that's that's awesome. You got a you got a job here. You got to introduce the biscuits. Well, when you're being broadcast all across the nation in the biscuit commercial, did anybody recognize you? Did you ever get sp uh, spot or sightings as the biscuit guy? Like, hey, you're the biscuit guy. <laughs> when I was the biscuit guy, I was probably, I don't know, 22, 23 years old. So if I could use biscuit guy to like meet nice ladies or something, <laughs> you know, we'd be going, hey, how do you ladies know biscuit guy? <laughs> in, but no, in, in, in true answer to your question, Nobody recognized me as the Biscuit Guy, and they still don't. <laughs> Such a shit answer. Is that commercial out on YouTube? Like, it is. You can, find it. you can actually find it. It's there somewhere. The numbers are going to just spike today. <laughs> <laughs> biscuit Boink. Biscuit Boink. Biscuit Boink. Boink. Oh, Boink. Sorry, yeah, okay. Uh, well, let's turn to the question over there. Hi, how are you? What face? Hi. Zero faces. It's on. It's on. Oh, we can hear you. Um, I just want to thank you, Tom, for coming out and doing cons now and podcasts. Yeah. It's great to see you out. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just, if I could just add some, you know, I came out, honestly, because some, because people were, I just work, you know, I'm like a working actor. Just, just working and stuff, and because I, you know, because I didn't do the things with the cast or whatever, people are like, oh, oh, the mysterious bitter man, he doesn't do stuff. <laughs> Dude, I'm working, you know, like, I'm, I'm trying to buy groceries and stuff, you know? So people, I mean, I was getting emails from people, why do you hate us? You <laughs> don't hate anybody, I'm just trying to, but, but it's good, but everyone uh, has been uh, terrific, and, and I appreciate your kindness. Yeah. Now, what is your question? What's that again? Speaking of art, um, somebody who does some voice acting, um, what, what do you think of the amazing show, Rick and Morty, if you've ever considered giving a voice to that show? Uh, Rick and Morty is, is a kind of a play on Doc and Marty. Mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> and I, I, I've seen the show and think it's great and fun and creative. Uh, I haven't been invited to be on the show, so I, I just haven't come on the show. Petition. But basically, if you've got like, free donuts, I'm there. Tell me when they're freaking morning donuts. Bing! Uh, but 
it's fun. The great, it's really funny that um, maybe you guys, there's a band called Reliance Today. They had a song called Hello Mr. Flop on one of their early albums. So my kids are huge Reliance K fans. They love the posters and everything. And so I know who they are. Out of the blue, I get an email. Hello, Tom. We're this band, Reliant K. And uh, we're big fans of yours. I email, jeez, I know who you guys are. <laughs> we're, we've been invited to perform on The Tonight Show. Will you play the guitar with us? Oh, I, I thought it was a joke. You're kidding. No, we're, we, I think it'd be cool. So I got to be a rock star for one day on you know, The Tonight Show, playing with Reliant K. Because it's a song we were fans. But that kind of stuff, you know, Rick and Morty, or all of the the interesting tribute things have been have been really crazy, really crazy. So so uh, yeah, I would do it, especially you know, as I say, three times. <laughs> did that make uh, make you look cool in the eyes of your kids? Like, were they like, oh, dad? Like, I was I've been really lucky in that respect. That when my daughters were tiny. I got a part on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Woo! So, you know, I did a lot of cartoons and everything, but to them, being on, he's on Sabrina the Teenage Witch. <laughs> you know, like little girls, 12 year olds, what a call! <laughs> Emily Stan is on Sabrina the Teenage Witch! <laughs> and... So that was a thrill. To have the kids be small and be on SpongeBob SquarePants was absolutely unbelievable because uh, Tom Kenny's on the show, uh, Bill Fagerbacki, all the Roger Bumpers is here. So as, as we would record Spongebob, and people's kids or some nephew would come and hey Tom, you do the butthead thing to my nephew Rick. <laughs> well, come here Ricky, hello, anybody home? So they're having this big cast and crew party for Spongebob and I'm bringing my kids to this party. And I just bring the cast all together to say, I have an announcement to make. I've done a bit for all of your kids, nephews, and everything. When my kids get there, you do Patrick and SpongeBob. <laughs> and yeah. I say it's all right to stop. You're not done yet, Squidward. Keep going. <laughs> so it's really, it's really been fun. Yeah, I respect to have that though. Those pop cultural intersections with kids. They've had a lot of fun. That's cool. That's cool. Hi. Well, first of all, it is just so awesome to have you here, Mr. Tom Wilson. Thank you. And my question for you is and Back to the Future Part 2, did you ever get to meet Elijah Wood? <laughs> uh, Elijah Wood was in the scene with me. Oh, yeah. But I didn't know him as Elijah Wood then. Yeah. <laughs> I knew him as, as some candy. <laughs> <laughs> So I met Elijah, okay. and I said, hello, Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said something like, hey, how's it going? good. <laughs> but I didn't know he became Elijah Wood. <laughs> <laughs> it was really a long time. There was a moment.